Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm gonna talk you through a day in the life of me, but not a normal day in the life, it's gonna be a day in the life when traveling. So, we're actually going away to London tomorrow to watch Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And if any of you know me, I'm quite a big Harry Potter fan. And Hannah's colleague offered two tickets for us because she couldn't make it to the Cursed Child, which is a theater play in London tomorrow. So we're gonna to head down tomorrow morning and we're coming back late tomorrow night. And normally we'd probably stay over in one of these kind of situations, but because I'm extreme dieting, I've got my photo shoot in about six weeks, we thought it'd be probably be a little bit of a waste of money getting a hotel because I couldn't really drink, couldn't really eat out. So we're just gonna go down and then come back in the same day. But obviously it's gonna be a full day, leaving at nine and getting back probably close to midnight. So obviously I'm gonna have to prep all my foods ready for tomorrow. So I'm just gonna talk you through the food prep for now. Okay, so we're gonna prep tomorrow's foods and I think obviously it's, it's gonna be a rest day tomorrow. Um, which is good because I'm doing six bikes at the minute uh, and training is getting more and more challenging as the weeks progress. So five meals tomorrow, breakfast, lunch, tea, and then kind of two smaller meals. So we're gonna make the eggs, chicken, salmon, and obviously yogurt as well, but that can be the last thing to do. So I'm just gonna kind of show you how I'd go about tomorrow because I feel like a lot of people will maybe struggle with this scenario so to speak so plenty of chicken seasoning on there something, something i never did for a few years was actually not season my chicken and i just had it like chicken breast by itself which was very it was a very sad few years for me to be honest and now i've started seasoning things it goes up another level so i'm gonna get the chicken and salmon in first and foremost if it turns on that would always help do so yeah it's going to be a bit of a weird day because obviously taking like salmon chicken it's probably not going to be the most fresh of foods tomorrow but when you're on plan and you're trying to achieve a fitness goal like like anyone is really this is just going to be a hopefully a useful video in regards to how, I, how to go about it so i'm going to obviously show you the food prep first and foremost and then i'll show you kind of how i would go about my day tomorrow morning routine and then we will hopefully next video will be on the train or maybe even the ice bath in the morning because i've got a few check-ins to do tomorrow morning and yeah i'll talk you through it from start to end it's gonna be a long day it's gonna be a good day though um so yeah i'll see you in the next video before i go a little tip first of all if you don't have these what would you call them? Fried egg holders. holders, cookie cutters, templates, don't know what you call them, but these, to make sure you get the perfect circular egg, are a game changer, so I definitely recommend buying these. I can't even remember where they're from, I think they're my mum's actually. But another tip when you are making fried eggs, so that you don't have a runny yolk when you bite into it on said bagel, whisk, fork, Hannah won't let me use a fork because I'll scratch the pan apparently, and spatula and just give it a little whisk so then the egg cooks or fries whole and you don't have any runny yolk to deal with, especially if you're eating it on a train. Probably wouldn't be the best lock. Just thought I'd mention as well, I am making two days worth of food. This is today's and tomorrow's. I'm not some like dieter who's consuming like 5,000 calories. It's just um, two days worth of food. So how many on here? One more, one more. Hannah's food as well. So this is why it seems like quite a high volume of scranage. Pop these in, bish bash bosh. See you in the morning. The morning is here. First things first, make our way to the bathroom to get this morning's scale weight. 
This is a protocol every single morning in a fasted state. Moment of truth, 172. I'm gonna put that down to holding the camera. Second part was to wake Hannah up and then to let that glorious sunshine through the window. Hydrate, I always try and drink at least a litre before anything else in the day just to make sure I rehydrate from the night before. And then of course, our favourite task, making the bed. So we're up, seven o'clock. This is unusual territory for our hand. But she's agreed that she'll help me film this YouTube video, which I'm sure she's happy about. So first things first, I'll let you take over the camera. We're gonna get in the bath. As some of you know, I do. At least two or three times a week, I make sure partake in the ice bath, which I don't think YouTube's seen yet. I've been doing cold showers in the past, but my mum, I feel like I've spoken about this on YouTube previously, my mum and stepdad, Antonio, have <laughs> bought me an ice bath for my birthday, so it's, uh, it's definitely a step up from the cold showers. But it doesn't actually quite get cold enough. But I thought it's quite chilly this morning to be fair, isn't it? So this is it. Loomy pod. Oh, water looks a little bit murky. And what I'd normally do is freeze these water bottles. Put them in the freezer from Costco. And then just keep topping them up, but it doesn't actually quite get cold enough. As you can see. What's this? just under 20 degrees. I don't know if this is right, but we're gonna try it with ice today. I'm gonna to put these in now and then leave it for, I'd say, 10, 15 minutes, if we've got time. This is my first time doing it with actual ice, minus the water bottles. Oh, that was plastic though, the size of that. That's Titanic shit. I'm going to do a couple of check-ins that I've got to do before we go to London. While the ice bath cools up, cools down, cools down. Uh, so I'm going to make a quick start on these. We're going to be leaving in about an hour's time, so I can hope to get at least three done. And then I'll try and get some done, potentially on the train um, today on the way back. <laughs> Set the timer. Try and typically do four minutes if I can, so wish me luck. It's definitely a lot colder now. Ah, you might want to take this mic in a minute. Ah. Ooh, we're in. Ah. Actually, I can speak for a second with this. Yeah, definitely a lot colder <laughs> with the ice, which is nice though. This is how it should be, I guess. And it's fair, I normally do it a little bit earlier than this. It's quite peaceful as you can see. I always kind of sit in here before people get up. But just looking at the blue skies, I know it's um, often frowned upon nowadays, these ice baths. I see a lot of them funny kind of Instagram accounts saying like, you fell, you fell her ice baths in the back garden and films themselves, which I do find funny. But I always think like, if you can use something like this, which is natural, to kind of make yourself feel better, you know, psychologically and mentally, and I think from recovery as well. I had a heavy leg session yesterday, and my legs are battered, and it does help with my recovery massively, but it wakes me up. I'm not necessarily a morning person, never have been. My mum would have vouched for that, Hannah will vouch for that. I wake up bog-eyed, <laughs> and I'm literally like, oh. But as soon as I get in this, four or five minutes, I'm literally like I've had about five Red Bulls for the rest of the day, at least for kind of six to seven hours, so. I don't get why you wouldn't do that, you know. People would be the first to jump on a, you know, oh, go on, just have a beer on the weekend, it makes you feel better. But obviously that's, you know, I love beer, don't get me wrong, but 
you know, if you, why would you not do something like this, which would only benefit you throughout the day? It makes you know sense to me. Uh, I think it's just frowned upon because these people haven't tried it. So try it. I'm gonna put my head under now. So we'll see you in a bit. about to dive into this Weetabix and protein shake. I think the most important thing, like I've mentioned before, is when you are out and about is just, if anything, make sure you hit your protein targets per day as they're going to keep you full and allow you to retain muscle when dieting. We're just currently on our way to Stockport train station. Um, we couldn't actually get a train late enough back from Runcorn or else we would have gone there, but so the car's at Stockport. We are on our way now, so the train's at 9.44, but we're about 44 minutes early, which is good, because normally we're, well, we were still rushing, weren't we? We always rush, but we thought that this, this morning we're just gonna play it safe, hopefully grab a coffee. And then I think, that, what time's the train back? Five past ten back, so probably getting in around close to midnight to be fair. I'm in the wrong lane here. So yeah, about ten minutes away from Stockport station. Never been to this station before, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's a joke. Um, so yeah, I'll give you a little bit more of an update on the train. Maybe provide you with some exquisite education. But for now, see you at the station. Coffees have been acquired from the good old trusty Starbucks. Hannah's gone for a... It's what we both normally get, but obviously with me dieting, gone for the black iced coffee, which tastes absolutely unreal. <laughs> Nat, would much rather go for the Cortado. See how they spelled the name? Not bad, not the worst that we've had, but it'll do. So yeah, I think we always have a debate, don't we? Costa or Starbucks, which we prefer. What's your view? Starbucks. Because I think I'm Starbucks as well, to be honest. So just waiting for the train at 9.44. Zooming in very slowly, but you can see it's 9.37. We're ready, we're at the platform. We've got two coffees. This is like a new us. I'm very proud of us. All the food in the bag. Next stop, London Euston. We then boarded the train and then I continued with a few more check-ins before delving into my yoghurt which I had to consume with a fork, which is deemed criminal. But we move forwards. Next stop, Euston. <laughs> Touchdown in London, Euston. Second time here this year, actually. I was a game for client. Phil's transformation back in March. Was it March or April came for Phil? April or March? Oh, shit. So, two hour journey. Did a few check ins on the train. Couldn't really record loom videos because it was a bit crowded and a bit loud. So, I've made a few changes to a few people's. Uh, 
check-ins and obviously just sent like a few voice notes just to tide them over and I'll either send their loom videos back on the way back tonight or do it in the morning. But all the main ones are done. Well, all of them are done, there's no main ones. And now we're just gonna, what time is it? We've got the show, first show is at two, is it? Two o'clock, the first bit. Um, and then there's a break and then there's the second part of the show. But we're just gonna have a little wander around now, try and find the uh, theater. I was gonna say maybe get some food, but all the food's in my bag. <laughs> uh, catch you at the next part of the video. I do miss about living in the city and although I was only in Leeds for three years it's like cool things like this I know it's not anything specific but there's just always so much going on in the cities and don't get me wrong I love you know the countryside love living where we live but when you are in a the city there's just always so much going on like we walked down the street and already seen you know like five different things that are just kind of abnormal nothing that you'd expect to see in a little small village town like Hell's little garden quite near the theatre so we've just stopped for mandatory monster and wrap and I'll be having my bagel. Phoenix Gardens it's called if anyone wants to uh, check it out it looks alright. And then it was showtime Harry Potter and the Cursed Child at the Palace Theatre. I wouldn't normally go and watch plays or anything kind of theatrical but I'll tell you what this was pretty impressive the special effects were good and the storyline wasn't half bad either. <laughs> Well, 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 guys, the day has finally come. Ten long weeks without a drop of alcohol, and I can honestly say. I've missed it, but I have felt better throughout the whole 10 weeks, but seeing as though we're down in London and seeing as though the sun's out and seeing as though it has been 10 weeks and in a way I was thinking, no, let's just go to full sprint without drinking, right to the end of the photo shoot. Then a part of me was thinking I would go against a lot of my values and the way I would coach my clients, you know, it's all in moderation, hence why we've only gone for a half pint. So yeah, I'm not annoyed, I'm actually quite excited that I've got this far without and obviously again all in moderation it's only a half pint I've done 12,000 steps already and we still need to walk back to the theatre and back to the train station so we'll probably be getting around 20,000 steps today so I think I may have earned it cheers Jeez. he's human after all Just been to McDonald's for the second time per day. First time for the toilet, second time for a bottle of water. Half time shake. What was it? Two hours, first part, two hour break. Now we're going back in for the second part of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. It's all right, it started off a bit slow, but it, uh, it definitely picked up. It got, got a lot better towards the end. Uh, so yeah, going back in for the second part. London complete full day of eating, a lot of steps, and a half pint. Look at these spots. Um, very good day, very good show. Um, and we are now, well, I'm talking into my last meal. Salmon and rice and veg. And of course, it's got itself 
six chicken nugget meal. Of course she has. And that is a wrap. Tiring day. But one day, you know, it's a hard life walking around London, watching theatres. Theatres, watching shows all day, but 17,000 steps banked, half a pint of Moretti, and long day. You know, we were up, what time were we up? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, and we should be getting in around 20 to 1, which is a hell of a long day, but very good day, something different, and I'm glad I've had a bit of a rest from training and the bike. It's nice. Although the steps have probably taken their toll, so. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you can take something from this day in the life when traveling. And I'll see you in the next video.